Hey, this is Rich over at TVP Live, and in this tutorial, <clears throat> we are going to attempt to make uh, this table here look uh, natural on this background. So I started uh, a couple minutes ago <clears throat> by tracing out to the table using um, an eraser at a five-point soft brush, and we're just going to continue, and we're going to zoom in. And I'm doing a series of, of lines to erase along the table here. And what I do is I hold, sh I click, hold shift down and click where I want it to end up. And that kind of allows you to um, make a series of straight lines, like from here to here. And you, as you can see, I'm leaving almost no edge because any edge that shows is really not an edge. What it is is the next color. You don't think of it as an edge of a table or an edge of anything. Just think of it as colors. And that way, you can really get a handle of what you're getting rid of. You're not getting rid of the background of the table. You're getting rid of one color to another. And that makes editing and compositing a lot easier when you think of it like that. That way, I can cut into the actual image without it being an issue for me as an editor, as a photo editor, because what the audience doesn't see won't hurt them, because they'll never know. Like, see this edge here? It's, you see the brown? That followed the table, but guess what? That brown is going to show as a flaw. So we cut into the actual table a little bit to get rid of that brown, and nobody will know. And now we have the table cut out with the top and the flowers. Um, not cut out, but uh, erased along its edges. And the reason we use this instead of the uh, polygon tool is because the polygon tool is too straight. Or if we use the magic eraser, the magic tool, it's not going to cut in as nice and clean as this. So let's now cut the actual table out using the polygon tool. And what we do is we just draw a series of lines in between what we erased before like so. We're going to come up to the end here, or is it the start? It's right over there, so boom, boom, boom. Now I'm going to double click to finish that. Now if I hit delete, it's going to delete the um, the middle. So what we want to do is, is delete everything else. So we right click and hit select inverse, and then hit delete. Boom. And now we got to this table. Now to get rid of this line, it's control D. I don't know what the D stands for, but... Uh, you know, it is what it is. So here's the table. Now let's go back to this image. We've got a lot to work on here because we need to soften all this stuff up. This is probably a pole behind us. And this here looks like, I don't know, like a microphone or something. Um, table will cover a lot of this. So maybe we can bring in the table and just take a look at, at what it looks like. This is without any fixings to the table or shadows put in. But we definitely want the table to be up front. Let's first straighten out the image. This is not level. And I'm going to take the image, uh, transform, and distort. I want this to be straight. So I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to hold shift so it stays straight up and down. I'm going to do this just ever so slightly. And what that did was, and I'm just kind of guessing. By doing that, if I draw a box, 
I'll show you the line. See the line is right on it, on the edge of the room. So now we know it's pretty much centered. Now that we have that box, I'm going to right click and hit copy. I'm going to take that new image and I'm going to go to image transform and distort and I'm going to pull the floor wider. And if I wanted to, to make it look like it's for reals, then you pull it out and straight because if you go like this, then it doesn't look real. It's got to look real. So let's go like out to about here. Make both sides equal, uh, equal as possible. That gives us a lot more floor space to work with for the table. So if you want to see what that looks like before, we were able to stretch the floor from this to this. Now, when we pull the table in, we got a lot more to work with. I don't have to use all that, but it's good to know that I have it when I need it. I can pull it back a little bit. And we can do final adjustments later. Anyway, the original table picture, if we look over here, actually it's not there. Anyway, the table was like almost against the wall, like, like over here. So we're going to pull it forward like this. And as a matter of fact, we can take the background and squeeze it down because we're going to cut a lot of the background off. Because this is about the table, not the background. And now that we're doing that, let's also blur the background but before we do that let's do a couple fixings so once again let's get rid of the table I'd like to fix this get rid of that plug and maybe help the shadows a little bit here we're probably not going to use the welcome sign um, it's not really that important but we might I don't know we'll see okay so I want to grab a piece that's similar to this from a similar area if I come over here the light is really bright so I'm going to stay over here in this area and <clears throat> grab a copy of a little piece that's like right here a little bit bigger than what we want so we can do some fade out I'm going to right click copy now we got a piece that we can bring over here now to make it different what I'll do is I'll go enhance and I will I'm sorry uh, image rotate and flip vertically boom that makes it different from uh, this area here now I'm going to turn it a little bit so that the lines match because it's not really straight up and down um, horizontally straight I'll bring it up a little bit maybe bring it back just a tad like this and get it as close as possible to match the line in between okay that's pretty darn close Oh, I like it right there. Now I'm going to grab a an eraser for, oops, let me make sure I know which one is that. That's layer three. Grab an eraser, nice big eraser. Um, let's lessen it so we know where the edge of the background that we need to cover is because we don't want to mess with that. So grab an eraser, a soft brush. That's too big. Let's try half that, 50%, <clears throat> 50 pixels. That's a little bit small. Let's do 60. And let's go from here to here, and then here to here, here to here, here to here. I'm going to show you what that is when I get rid of everything else but that piece, and I bring it up to 100%. It's that square that I cut out, but it's got soft edges. And the soft edges, when I bring the background back up, is going to make it completely non-visible. Obviously, it's a little bit lighter because I grabbed it from over here. As we go from left to the right of the picture, it gets brighter. So I'm going to grab this, go to Enhance, go to Lighting, go to Brightness. Now watch this as I bring the brightness uh, down. It's going to disappear. See that? I can, I can exaggerate it so you can see it too bright and make it too dark. So you just play with this. This is really fun. And I like it right around there. A little bit less. And minus 31. Minus 29. Let's make that minus 30 because I like round numbers. This is before, after, before, after. Hit OK. Zoom out and you'll never know that there was a piece there that was hiding. See that? You'll never know. And if you really wanted to get into it and make it even better, then I would take the smudge brush and grab... Um, 
little piece and just do a little bit of smudging like this on the edges of, of this piece so it, it really melds into the original and not too much just a couple just so that you don't see a square piece and that's pretty much it there's no way you could tell that there was that there was a, a, a piece they're covering it all the imperfections you know that's what they are in reality nobody knows and that's it. Now I'm going to marry this piece down. So right click and merge the, the layers. So now that's part of the background. All right. Next. We like that. What are we going to do about this here? I'm not sure. This is a tough one. I'm going to make a copy of this just in case I mess up. Sometimes when I use the smudge brush, I, I use it too much and end up ruining. Let's go 50% or 50 pixels. Uh, let's go 100. I don't want it to smooth out too much. Let's see, because then it looks fake. I don't know. When it comes to shadows, a lot of times there's not much you can do. You just kind of have to live with them. And all it's doing is just it's just pushing the shadow. But at least I can soften them a little bit. Oh, that's that's on the next layer you know and it is wood it's not that important all right um and we're going to blur this a bit so another thing i can do if i want to soften this a little bit is i'm going to add another layer grab a darker color like this uh, make the brush a little bit 70 bigger about as big as this whole area let's go 75 and i can go like from this oops i don't like that color let's try right there sometimes you have to try a couple different things from there to there <clears throat> now it looks a little strange now but when i bring the opacity down It'll soften the whole thing. And we like 66. I like round numbers. I go 65. You don't believe me? Check this out. I'm going to zoom out. You don't know. But even to make it look better, I'm going to take a big eraser. And I'm talking big. 1,000 points. That's too big. Let's go 500 points. And I go like this. Watch this um, shadow I just put in. Oops, that's too much. How about right there? So it's a little softer on that side. A little softer. So you can't tell too much, but watch before and after. Before, see how harsh that is? After, before, after. See, you got so used to seeing it that by the time I was done, you didn't even know that it was an extra shadow. And what it does is it softly brings this from lighter to darker, right in that area before. Harsh shadows softer shadows harsh soft i'm going to do that again with this one here another layer grab this dark area and make this nice and big try about uh 100 points let's go 125 125 from here to here bring this down And let's go 75 because I like round numbers. Percent. Grab the eraser, make the eraser nice and big, 500. And boom, boom, boom. And now it looks natural. Watch this. Before, after. You never knew. Before, after. Maybe get rid of um, a little bit on top here. Um, to there. And you'll never know that that was there. I'm going to do this one also, just because it needs a little bit. And do 130. 130. Boom. To here. Boom. Boom. To here. And lessen this a little bit. 76. Once again, 75. Like round numbers. Grab our eraser. Make 500 points. Let's actually do 
250. Get rid of this up to here and then get rid of this. I, I'm going at angles because if you do it straight, that's going to be obvious. I'll undo. And there's a drawing angles. So now watch this. Before, after. And if I want to enhance that with the lighting, brightness, and watch this area as I bring it down and get rid of that background. And it just looks like a natural soft shadow. I'm going to grab the piece underneath it, this one, this one here. Go to Enhance, Lighting, Brightness, and Darken a little bit. See before, after. That's all it takes. Might even move it over to the right a little bit. Let's go 85. Boom. There it is. So we softened all that up. We're not working on the floor yet. Just this, just the walls. All right. So let's go ahead and bring back our table and work on the floor. Actually, before we do that, I want to merge everything we did here. So we take layer 0, layers 5, 4, and 3. Actually, 3 has to be a little bit darker. Lighting, brightness, boom. We like that. Maybe move it to the right a little bit. So I'm going to take layers 5 through layer 0, and I'm going to right-click and merge layers. Now, all that whole background is one color and uh, shade, and we softened most of the shadows here. Um, let's go ahead and work on blurring this background a little bit. So let's bring the table in. I can get rid of that other copy and make a new copy. This is always making copies in case we make mistakes. Turn that copy off. Now we're on this one. That's the background. Let's take a filter, a blur, and go to Gaussian. And we obviously want to overdo it. I always overdo it so just to get an idea that I know I'm working on the right layer. And just because it's fun to see that. And this is zero. I'm not looking at the numbers. I'm looking at the picture and just going a little bit at a time to see what's going to look natural. And it's not going to be too much that we need. But we want to pull the table away from the background. That's at 3.8. I like round numbers, so let's go 3.5. Um, let's not overdo it too much. 3.0. Let's go 2.0, 2.5. I kind of like that better. So I see this before, after. The table pops out afterwards. I think I want to go back to 3. 3.0 and call it a day on the background. Next, let's position the table where we want it. And I don't know if we want the welcome sign or not. We can try without it first. I don't know, it doesn't matter. Unless we extended this, that's going to be a whole other session. But let's go ahead and bring the table down to about here. And, uh, okay. Let's say we like it right there. Yep, yeah, yeah. What are we going to do? Let's take the floor. Um, I'm going to make a safety in case I mess it up that to the back. Take the floor and first of all let's just darken it a little bit. This will make the table stand out a little more. And the shadows are okay. It's, they, they don't bother me that much. Okay. This is before. After. See how the table stands out a lot more? This is at minus 61 so I always overdo it and then back it off. Let's go to make this 30 points. I'm sorry, it's minus 30. Minus 30. So here's before, after. I think I want to go a little hot, uh, less. Minus 35. So it's nice and dark. Looks good. Now let's take the table. And we need to do a little bit of lighting 
adjustment on it, but let's check out and see what it likes to do on auto fix. Uh, that's too much. But I was thinking about uh, contrast, so it did help me decide uh, to add a little bit of contrast. See, this is less contrast, more contrast. I just want to add a little bit right around here. Let's go 25%. And then the brightness, we can play around with it. It should be actually darker in the bottom. So I'm going to leave this at zero. Hit OK. I'm going to separate the table from the legs, this, and the top. So let's take the first take the top off with the flowers. And we right click and hit cut. Then let's take the actual lid and the flowers off. I mean, I'm almost tempted to to do a separate flowers. Maybe leave this here because we just want this part. Yeah, I think I like that. So let's go like this. This will be interesting. Remember, it's a color change, not the actual top. So we're looking for color changes that we're separating. The better way to do this is to make a duplicate and erase carefully with the soft eraser. So this may not work. It might look too harsh edges. Um, make sure we got the right layer. Yes. Right click and cut. So now we got a series of three layers to work with. Zoom out, zoom back in. Let's see what we can do here. Um, let's take the legs and let's darken them. Enhance lighting, brightness, and let's give them less, a little less light. Not much, just a little bit. And bring down the uh, contrast. So this is before. Yes, we wanted to stand out, but not the legs as much as the as the top, because that's what you want to focus your eyes on. So this is minus 19. Let's go minus 15. This is minus 21. Let's go minus 15. And this is before, after, before, after. Split the difference, go minus 10, minus 10, and minus 10. So it's just subtle, before, after. I like that. Next, um, this piece here, I think we leave it alone. This top piece, I think we want to enhance, lighten, and brighten that a little bit. So let's bring that up as if there was lights coming from above. Like that. Really subtle. And the brighter you get, you sometimes have to bring the contrast down because then you start losing definition. So I'm going to bring the contrast down a tad. So this is before, after. See, now that really brings out the top. Before, after. It's a little too much. 38, let's go 30. This is minus 7. Play around with this. Let's go minus 10. I like round numbers and hit OK. I'm going to zoom back out to center it. And now look at what happens with the top. Oh, there we go. Now it looks a lot brighter. It sticks out. Um, let's go ahead and marry or fuse these three pieces together. Uh, layers 7, 6, and 1. Right click and merge those layers. Let's put a layer in between and start with the shadowing. We don't need too much, and we don't know. Well, the light's going from this end to that end, so um, let's go ahead and play around with that. Let's grab a pure black, boom, boom, and let's go 50 for the legs. If it was going straight across, we saw in because this is a curved leg, it's going to have to be a curved shadow but a long one though. So we can literally do something like that. And then this is like that, which is going to be kind of like, whoops, a little bit like, because they all meet. 
and this one goes it kind of goes elongated and I'm going to take the smudge brush from here and grab a bigger size about 150 and smudge it I'm just smudging <clears throat> the whole thing. Why? Because it's all going to look good. All right, so now we got our shadow there. But let's now make it look the proper um, opacity. It's 100, it's 0. Just slowly bring it in. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A little bit. I'm not looking at the numbers. I'm looking at the picture to see what looks natural. Okay. This is 54. Let's try the round number, 50 point. And we don't have to overdo it. Just a little subtle. Before, oops, wrong one. Before, after. Before, after. I like it. Maybe I'll smudge out a little bit. Oops. I picked the wrong tool. I need smudge tool. I can go like that. Kind of just blow it out a little bit. See that? So it just fans out, sort of. And by the time it's up here, there's not much of a shadow. So here we go. Um, now we want to have a little bit of sh a heavier shadow f from the direct underneath here, just a tad. So we're going to add another layer. We got the black. We got this. Uh, let's do this one a little bit bigger. Let's go 100 point. I'm going to have to play around with this. This is like the direct underneath shadow because there's lights bouncing off of everything. Let's take our smudge brush, nice 150 point, and let's push it back in where it's supposed to not be seen. This is more directly underneath. But it's okay if it comes out, if it pops out just a little bit. But we like the big brush so that it really is a soft, natural shadow. And we like that. Okay, looks good. Okay, obviously it's too harsh because um, it's not going to be at 100%. Let's go to our uh, opacity, take it to zero, bring it in, bring it out. Don't look at the numbers, look at the picture. What well, looks natural? Right around there. And this shows 29, let's make it 30%. I like round numbers. Let's pull this out again. Look how, look how this is starting to come together. Okay, I'll take this shadow, let's go add 5%. So it's 35%. Let's take our other shadow and minus it from 50 to 40 and now starting to look pretty realistic as a matter of fact I'm going to make this 30 point so it's really subtle like that and that looks good it looks natural and it looks real this is 35 maybe I'll do that at, to 40 there we go um we're looking pretty darn good here. And I'm not sure what to do about this, but let me go ahead and cut it out. I'm going to save this. And we'll go to desktop and table. Table. Fixed. Photoshop. And let's cut this out. Can we shorten the, the, the uh, floor at all? The more we shorten it, the more realistic it's going to look.
See, I can make it elongated or make it shorter. Just where the picture is going to end. So try it right there. Let's go ahead and do a nice cutout. Our crop. I think it's okay if we have some of the sign in. It should be okay. Right? What do you think? That's not too bad. You know what? I now I'm feeling like we might as well include some of it. You know, it doesn't matter if things are, are half in the shot. That's okay. It looks real, like a real place. Bring this down to here. Bring this right to the edge. I kind of like that. Let's cut that out. Boom. And here we got us a nice table shot. Uh, maybe add a little bit, enhance the color on the table, which will also enhance the flowers. And here's no color. Here's too much color. Don't look at the numbers. Look at the picture. Let's pull it out nice and bright. This is showing plus 14. Let's go 15 points up. Shoot, let's go 20. No, it looks unnatural. Go back to 15. All right. I think we like that. It looks pretty natural. The table's out in front. The background's blurred. Um, the only other thing I might want to do is blur the floor just a little bit. Not the foreground, but the background. And it's still a little bit bright for my um, liking. So I'm going to go and enhance lighting, brightness, and bring the floor down even a little more. Okay, this is minus 20%. This was before, after. I think I like this better like that. So I'm going to leave that there, but I want to blur the background as it gets closer to this back. Because see how the back is blurred? We want to make this look natural. So what we do is copy this layer. We duplicate it. Take the top layer and go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian. And now we want to match the background. That was at 3.0, but does it look good at 3.0? So I'm going to purposely bring it less and then bring it more. It starts to look fake. Bring it down less. We want as much as we can before it starts to look fake. So right around there, it's actually, and now look at the number, it's exactly 3.0. So I'm going to try 3.5. It's cheating just a little bit, but that's okay. All right, so that's our uh, background of the floor. We have the foreground of the floor on the layer of, uh, just below it. So we take the background, grab an eraser. Let's make a nice big, I don't know, 500 point. Boom, boom, boom. 500 point eraser. That's 5,000. And that's going to blur from across from here to here. That's actually too little. 750. We want this to be the actual blur to take up almost the whole floor from here to here. That's how long it takes to blur from one to the next. So we take the eraser, go to the background of that floor. Um, and start from here. I don't know if that's enough. Let's try 1,000 points. We'll try this. If it doesn't work, we'll go back and fix it. And blur from here. Oh, the top layer. And I hold down the Shift key and come across. And I'm going to come back again. Boom. Let's zoom in and see what we got. So now what you see is the floor is in focus here, and it slowly blurs as it goes back to the background. We like that, because now it looks natural, totally natural. All right, I think we got it for now. Now, there is one more little trick here, is we got the, the background, this background, this background, the and let's see this background and then the table i'm going to try one more thing add a layer in between the table and the whole background grab us a pure black brush color it all black now we got just the table take the black and just do really subtle like maybe five points here's nothing here's a hundred here's nothing just go up a little bit boom 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 don't even look at the numbers just look at the picture 
See that? See what's happening? The table's coming out. At a certain point, it looks fake. But you know what? If this is a product shot, a little fakeness is okay. Now I'm going to bring it back to zero. I want to play with this until we like it. And I think we like it right here at 3%. Okay, let's toggle this on and off. No, let's, let's go to 5 5%. Toggle it on and off. It's so subtle. Let's see what 10% looks like. Boom. Off, on, off. Oh, gosh, I'm really stuck. I'm going to do it at 5%. And then I'm going to take my table and actually I'm going to um, make it a little bit opaque because it's just too harsh. Bring it down just a tad. 93%. I'm going to go 95%. So it's actually 5% translucent, but guess what? It looks it looks natural. And that's it, folks. We got us a table in front of a nice background, um, and it really stands out. The shadows look natural, and uh, that's it for now. Over and out. Rich Tamayo at TVP Live. Have fun on Adobe Elements. That's it.